Konnichiwa minasama. Watashi wa Mark Hemmings desu. My name is Mark Hemmings and I welcome you all to a very interesting idea. Now I've been to Japan 16 times. I first started going in 1998 and I've been going back almost every year since then. And what I do is I guide other photographers around Japan, showing them the most beautiful places to take pictures, the best places to eat, wonderful food. However, because I'm also an ultra trail runner, I was thinking it might be interesting to start um, helping trail runners get to races, specifically in Japan, because I know the country very well, and it is a place that can be quite daunting. In fact, you can waste so much time just trying to figure out how to get around, when if you have a guide, everything is very smooth especially for a first time visitor to Japan. So what I was thinking is if there's any groups of ultra runners who can actually get into some of the races, I would come with you and I would organize the whole trip. And it would be very, very simple. All you'd have to do is show up to the airport and everything would be taken care of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so what we have here, are some different options. Now, some of these are later in 2024. Um, some of them are too, it's obviously too late. So it would be a 2025 date, but the Lake Biwa 100 is on the most amazingly beautiful lake. And I've been to Lake Biwa a number of times. This is a hundred miler. Uh, by the way, it's also a hard rock endurance uh, 100 mile Qualifying race, UTMB qualifier, um, uh, six points for the uh, uh, ITRA. And it is probably something that, uh, you know, once in a lifetime adventure to be able to experience Lake Biwa um, on that 100 miler. Also, the Mount Fuji 100. Now, this used to be called Ultra Trail Mount Fuji. They changed the name, I believe, last year. And this is part of the Grand Canaria World Trail Majors. And it's very, very established. And it's something, of course, that I don't think I would personally ever be able to get into. But uh, a lot of you could. And it is quite a stunning route. Also, the Golden Trail Series. They have a national series, which is something that's probably a little bit easier to get into. For example, Central Alps Skyline Japan. I've been on this route, or at least parts of it, hiking. It is stunning. The Japanese Alps are amazing. Now, the Nozawa Onsen. I've also been, I used to live near Nozawa Onsen. In uh, 1999, I used to live in Japan, in Nagano. And Nozawa Onsen area is highland area. And it is incredibly beautiful. Now, the Hakuba Classic, I've been to Hakuba, the most amazing, beautiful, natural scenes. I don't know if this is the last Hakuba Classic that's going to be happening this fall, but anyway, that's something to look into. Now, the Golden Trail Series also has an international section. Uh, they call it the World Series, and this would be the, the Kobe Trail. It's 21 kilometers, so it wouldn't be an ultra, but in any case, it's uh, fairly well established. The Deep Japan Ultra 100. Now, I don't know much about this one, to be honest, but it looks really cool. And finally, at least the, the major ones that I've been able to find is the Fuji Five Lakes Ultra Marathon. Um, I'm from St. John, New Brunswick. And, uh, you know, regardless of where you're from, whether you're Canadian or American, um, we would all just meet either at Haneda or Narita Airport. And I would be there personally to pick you up. Uh, if we're not traveling on the same flight. And also, I have a lot of friends in Japan. And if it just so happens that uh, one of us is landing in Narita uh, and another at Haneda at the same time, I have friends who are very able to do airport pickups. Arrival logistics. So that's the uh, airport transportation. Booking the first two nights hotel in Tokyo. Now, the reason why I suggest uh, a you know, two nights in Tokyo, the first night, obviously, after that long flight, you want to stay in Tokyo. And I've, I don't know how many times I've been through Tokyo, 100 probably. And it's a fantastic city. I know it really well. And I know the best places to eat, the best places to take pictures, the best places for video, and also the trail running and ultra running and, and any of the gear stores that you would need. I, I know where they are. 
And that would be the place to go to pick up any type of gear that you would need for your race. So we would do a full Tokyo tour day. And this would be going around what's called the Yamanote line. My favorite loop in Japan is the train system that goes in a circle. It's a huge place, as you can imagine. I believe it is officially the, the largest city in the world. And these subcities all have their own specialty. And uh, we'd probably stay in Shinjuku, which is one of my favorite subcities of Tokyo. And I'd love to show you all around. Now, the after our full day in Tokyo, we would then take our uh, transportation, whether it be bullet train or express train uh, to the, the site, uh, wherever the race is going to be. And I would be in charge of getting rental cars if needed. Now, if it's going to be a trail race where there is crew needed and uh, it's only accessible via rental car, then I would rent the car and I would work as your crew, depending on how many people have come, of course. But in any case, high level, I would be working as a crew to support you for the race. And of course, look after, you know, planning for meals, making sure that uh, we have accommodations. A place like Japan, which is notorious for being very expensive, I have become very well versed in doing Japan cheaply. I know all the tricks to uh, make sure that it's it's not expensive because it could be hugely expensive, but it can also be also be done on a budget. Yeah, so hotel bookings, car rental, um, race day crew tasks. And after the race, uh, I usually like to go to hot springs. And because I do a lot of work in Japan, I teach photography workshops in Japan each year. And whenever that photography workshop is finished, I always go to a hot spring and I just relax until the next one comes. And of course, transportation back to Tokyo, usually one night in Tokyo, um, depending on the flight schedules and then, you know, logistics of getting to the airport and so on. That's about it. Now, if you are a trail runner who is interested in Japan in any one of the trail races, uh, the ultra races that I mentioned, and if you can get enough people together, then I can start planning. Now, this is a, a beginning for me working in the trail running and ultra running scene for Japan. So what I would do is I would do it for free. Uh, this, this is sort of an initial run. All I would do is just make sure that I charge for my expenses. And that would be divided evenly between everyone who's able to come. So the more people who would be coming to a certain race, the cheaper it would be for each person. Now, what are my credentials for tour guides in Japan? Well, I do two, usually about two uh, photo international photo workshops in Japan every year. And I would say probably I've done 20 to 30 photo workshops. So this would be uh, North Americans and Europeans and some Asians meeting me in Narita or Haneda Airport. And then I spend a week going around to the best of Japan, usually in Oshima, Kyoto, Nagano, Tokyo, obviously. So I've been doing this a long time. In fact, 2005 was the first time I started bringing groups of people to Japan. Mostly they are artists and photographers. However, I thought, why not, you know, extend this to the ultra running scene? Because I've done so much logistics planning in Japan for foreigners. And the first thing that they, you know, someone wanting to visit Japan finds out that it's very confusing. Not many people speak English, or if they do, they're very reticent about practicing English uh, with you. So having someone who knows their way around is very helpful. And it just, it, it saves a lot of money. And it saves a lot of time, especially if you're only going to allot yourself maybe four or five days in Japan for a trail race. You don't want to waste your time trying to figure out how to get on the subway, for example, in Tokyo, or how to avoid spending $80 on a meal and then instead spending only $10 on an equally delicious meal. These are all things I can help you with. So what I would ask is that you share this with any of your trail running friends ultra marathon friends. And if it's something that interests you, and it doesn't matter where you're from in the world, by the way, um, you know, I'm from Canada, Eastern Canada, but if it's a, a, a trail race that you have like four or five people wanting to do, then maybe it can be combined with um, 
some trail runners who are from a different part of the world that I can, you know, sort of combine into one to make it uh, less expensive for each person. Okay. Um, my email is mark at markhemmings.com and I'll put that information in this YouTube video below. And I would love to see you in Japan either the, later this year or next year. Who knows? Who knows? It's, uh, it's something again, something I'm just thinking about uh, getting into because I love Japan. I love ultra marathon running and I really enjoy planning these trips. I really have a lot of fun doing it and I love introducing Japanese culture to people as well. It's very exciting. Tea ceremony, so sublime. Kyoto, the most incredible history. Tokyo, the land of the future. Nagano, the land of the Japanese snow monkeys and the hot springs. It's all wonderful. Mount Fuji. By the way, I didn't mention this. Um, it's quite possible that some of you can't get into any of the races if they are uh, races that require uh, points or previous race experience. Well, one thing that's possible is simply getting a whole bunch of people to do Mount Fuji. And that would be to climb Mount Fuji, either fast packing or normal hiking up Mount Fuji, staying overnight, and then coming back down. Something like that. That's something I could certainly handle very easily. Okay, so I will say goodbye to you now. Please share this with your um, running clubs and your friends and we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you everybody, all the best.